Hello, and welcome to the third in the series of films about redox chemistry. Um, this one deals with half equations, and it deals with the simplest kind of half equations that we have to write, and they are the ones that have monatomic ions in. So we're going to be trying to write half equations not only for reduction, but also for oxidation. I suppose it would be good to remember what we mean by those two terms. So um, we had our um, oil rig way of remembering it, which was oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. Um, there is another one, if you don't like that one very much, and that is Leo, the lion, says grrr, like all good lions. Okay, so Leo the lion says, Leo, Leo the lion says grrr, okay, and that is a loss of electrons is oxidation, whereas a gain of electrons is reduction. Okay, so either one of those ways is a good way of remembering it, I suppose. Um, one other good thing to remember when you're doing these things is a, is a sequence of steps that you're always going to follow when you write these half equations. Okay, so we're going to start off in every one. We're going to write down the reactants and the products that we know. We're going to make sure that the atoms in our equation balance and we're going to make sure that the charge is balanced. We're going to do that by adding electrons to one side or the other. Okay, now that might seem a little bit obscure at the moment. So let's have a look at some examples. And we'll start with oxidation of atoms. So using our first rule, what we told here, well, we're starting with lithium. So there's lithium's formula. It doesn't have a charge because it's just the element. But we're forming lithium ions, so they're a product. Okay. We check that the number of atoms is the same on both sides. We've got one on both sides, so that's fine. But we've got a positive charge here and no charge over here, so we even up the charge by putting an electron in that side. We only need one because there's only one positive charge. Okay. This time we're going to use magnesium. We're going to oxidize it, so it's going to lose electrons. Okay. So magnesium is going to turn into magnesium ions. So once again, I'm writing the reactants and products that I know. Check the number of atoms is the same on both sides. I've got one of each, so that's great. And then I have to add some electrons to this side to balance this positive charge, because I've got no positive charge there. But one electron won't do this time. I need two. And notice something here. I've written two half equations, both for oxidation, and the electrons are always on the right. Okay, So that's one quick way of identifying if you've got oxidation in a half equation the electrons will always be on the right. I suppose it's a good way of checking if you've written a half equation for oxidation correctly, making sure that the electrons are on the right. OK, moving on. Let's look at the oxidation of some ions this time. OK, now sulphide ions, sulphur is in group 6, so a sulphide ion is going to have a 2 minus charge. I'm forming sulphur from these, so the formula of sulphur is simply S. Have I got the right number of electrons on both sides? Uh, a number of atoms on both sides. Yes, I do. I've got one sulfur up here and one sulfur there. So now I just need to balance up the charges. Haven't got any positive charge this time, but this side is more positive because this side's got negative charge. Okay, so I'm adding electrons to the more positive side. Okay, and I need two electrons to balance these two negatives. Okay, so now the charges are balanced and my half equation is finished. Once again, electrons on the right because I'm oxidizing. Okay. This time, uh, see how many times you can put the, uh, the word oxygen or oxidize in a sentence. So oxide ions are oxidized to form oxygen. Oxide is also in group 6, so it has a 2 minus charge. Now we've got to be a little bit more careful because oxygen does not have the formula O. It has the formula O2, which you should know. Okay, so this time I've got to do something to balance up. The atoms, I've got to have two of these ions, because otherwise I won't have two oxygen atoms to make this molecule. And then I'm putting electrons on the more positive side. I'm putting them on the right because it's oxidation. How many electrons? Well, I've got four minus on this side, so I have to have four minuses on that side to balance the charge. OK, moving on to reduction. We'll start with reduction of atoms. So we're looking at a phosphide ion. Now, because we're looking at reduction and not oxidation, you might expect to see the electrons on the other side because this time atoms are gaining electrons. Okay. So once again, what are the reactants and products? We've got phosphorus as our reactant. Okay. 
it's forming a phosphide ion. Phosphide ions are, well, phosphorus is in group five, so they, it forms a three minus ion. Okay, and um, to turn phosphorus into a phosphide ion, you only need one phosphorus atom, so the atoms balance. And this time I'm adding electrons to the left hand side because phosphorus is gaining electrons. Okay, and I have to balance this negative charge. So once again, I'm putting electrons on the more positive side. This is the left hand side in this equation. Okay, so there's a half equation for <coughs> phosphorus turning into phosphide. It doesn't matter if I put the electrons here or if I say phosphorus plus electrons, it means exactly the same thing. Okay, this time we're looking at chlorine being reduced to form chloride ions. Again, a little bit careful here because chlorine. Our reactant does not have the formula Cl, it's Cl2. So Cl2 is going to form chloride ions. Okay, so that's the formula of a chloride ion. It's in group 7, it gains one electron. Okay, but if I've got two chlorine atoms, I'll form two chloride ions. This side is more negative, this side is more positive. So this side needs the electrons. How many does it need? Well, I've got two negative here, so I need two electrons there. Okay, once again, the electrons are on the left because I'm reducing, right? The thing is gaining electrons. Okay, uh, nearly finished. Reduction of ions now. So this is ions gaining electrons. And notice everything that we've looked at so far has had ions that are made of only one atom. Just because some of the molecules haven't been made of only one atom, that doesn't mean we're not dealing with monatomic ions, okay? So anyway, it is... Um, Calcium being formed from calcium ions. What are our reactants and products? Well, calcium ions are what we're starting with, calcium 2 plus, and we're making calcium. Okay, once again, reduction. So we'd expect to see the electrons on the left. And yes, the left hand side is more positive. So I'm going to put electrons over here. And to balance the charges up, I need two electrons there. So calcium gains, calcium ion gains two electrons and becomes a calcium. And finally, uh, as far as the examples go, um, for just simple descriptions, there is one more slide after this. Silver is precipitated from a solution of silver nitrate. A little bit more thought required here because we need to think about what we're starting with and the fact that the nitrate is actually not involved in this half equation. Okay, Silver is precipitated from a solution of silver nitrate. So our silver nitrate contains silver ions. Okay, and we're forming silver because we're pre precipitating silver. So there's my reactants and products. The number of atoms is correct. So I just need to put electrons on the more positive side, which is this one. And that's plus one electron because I've got one positive charge there. So once again, electrons on the left when we are reducing something. Okay, this really is the last slide. Okay, uh, so we are explaining some observations here using a half equation. All right, so this is a little bit different because we're not being told what we're starting with and what we're ending up with, but we're being told something about an observation. So let's see if we can figure out what we're starting and finishing with. Okay, well, a piece of chromium is dissolved in an unknown solution. So we don't know what that is, so we can't possibly say what it's reacting with. But what we do know is that the solution turns green. And if we look at our color charts, we can see that one of the green ions is a chromium, 3 plus ion. So perhaps we're starting with chromium and we're ending up with chromium 3 plus. Check that the number of atoms balances. Yes, it does. There's one on each side. This side is more positive, so the electrons have to go on this side. And we need three of them to balance up the charge. What's happened to the chromium? Well, it's lost these electrons, okay? The electrons were on the right, so the chromium got oxidized to a chromium 3 plus ion. Okay, that's quite a lot of different examples of um, half equations for monatomic ions. Um, hopefully it will make sense, but if you've got any questions or if I've made any horrible mistakes, please feel free to let me know, either by coming to see me or by posting a comment on YouTube. Thank you very much.